Hi everyone, welcome to JavaScript coding interview series. In today's video, you had to find the output of the below code and you had to provide a valid reason why you have, uh, how you have got that particular output. We have a variable x, in that we are actually setting a math.floor operator, in that the value passed is math.random and we have, to, uh, we have an if loop where if it is checking whether x is greater than 0 0.5 then again we will set where x equal to 1 and if it is in the else loop we will be setting where x equal to 2 and then we will be printing the value of x. So please try it uh, from your end and see what is the value of x you are getting. So let's try from our end and see what is the output you are getting. Okay. So I have this particular script available in the test.js file and this particular script I am calling in the index.html as you can see here. So let me run this particular uh, script, okay, this index.html and make sure that everything is running fine. So this is running, okay. Now uh, in the code, uh, for the moment I will just uh, comment this particular console, okay. And let me refresh this page and open the console, okay. Just uh, in the inspect you will be able to open the console. So, okay, and I will also put breakpoints, okay, in the uh, code, okay, so I will be actually putting breakpoints uh, uh, in the code. So, if, if you want to get the code, okay, the script, it will be available in the sources tab, okay, within the inspect you will be able to get the sources and, uh, okay, yeah, so then we will actually see uh, how this code is working. So what we are doing, we are trying to create a variable x in that we are trying to apply a math.floor operator and we have a math.random. So what does this math.random does is, it create, you can see here, it returns a pseudo random number, it will be a random number and the value will be uh, ranging between 0 and 1. It can be any number between 0 and 1. And on that particular uh, number, whatever we have generated uh, through the random operator, in that we will be actually applying the math.floor operator. Okay, what does floor do? It returns the greatest integer less than or equal to its numeric argument. That means uh, if I do a console, okay, console of console of console.log of uh, math.floor, okay, math.floor of floor of 0 0.99 okay so what will happen is uh, it will actually uh, print the greatest integer less than or equal to its numeric argument so if it is even if it is 0 0.99 what will get printed so okay so because of this break point it will hit here okay so you can see in the console it will be 0 so we know that okay we know that uh, math.random will be uh, generating a random value between 0 and 1. So even if it is 0 0.99, okay, it will be uh, equivalent to 0, okay, it will be equivalent to uh, 0, okay, and math.floor will actually equate it to 0 and x will be 0 in this case, okay. So if x is 0, then what will happen? Uh, in the if condition, what will happen? If the e x is greater than 0 0.5, it will go to this particular loop, otherwise it will go to else part. So it will be always going into the else part. And here what we are trying to do, we are trying to create another uh, x, okay, another x which is of type where, where x equal to 2, okay. We have an already an x already uh, declared over here. So we are again trying to create an x. So what will happen? So for understanding this particular case, so you have to understand the scope of JavaScript, okay. So there is a scope uh, uh, concept in JavaScript that you have to understand, which means that uh, scope means that the current context of execution or the current execution context in which values and expressions are visible or can be referenced, okay, where we are able to uh, uh, check that these are the values that is available or can be referenced that is the scope in javascript okay so if a variable or expression is not in the current scope it will not be available for use if it is not uh, visible okay then it cannot be referenced right so and scopes can also be laid in hi uh, hierarchy so that child scopes can have access to parent scopes and not vice versa 
we have more uh, concepts like lexical scoping and all those things okay and there are different types of scopes okay we have a global scope which is the default scope for all the code running in script mode okay we have a global scope and we will we have a module scope we have modules in javascript right so the scope for code running in a module mode we have a module scope we have functions in javascript for that we have a function scope the scope created with a function and there are different keywords that's available in javascript so you might be already knowing we have a var keyword which we have used in our example so it declares uh, the var keyword actually declares a function scoped or globally scoped variable optionally initializing it to a value we need not want it, uh, that var to be initialized but for a let or const it's a block scope okay whatever we put it in an if uh, if block uh, if it is in a curly braces right it's a block scope so let and const is block scope where is function scope or globally scoped okay so now we will come to our question so as we have known that where is actually function or globally scoped what will happen so as uh, x is coming as zero over here that's why it has entered into this particular loop and again if we try to uh, provide where x equal to 2 what happens is it will be overwritten okay the 2 will be overwritten no 0 will be overwritten by 2 so and hence what will the value of x would be x would be printing 2 because 0 is overwritten okay because of the uh, global scope and we can see this in action okay so then you will be able to have a clear understanding so as you can see here if i refresh the page and press f10 you have to press f10 to, okay so now you can see here the value of c, uh, x is 0 so it will not enter into this particular if block and you can see here when we actually uh, we have a scope here okay you can see the scope and call stack here so yeah i'll just uh, refresh this again so that you will be having a clear understanding okay so uh, right now you can see here this is the first line of code and x has not been even uh, assigned the value but still there is a global scope created by javascript and the first line itself is not executed but still it creates a memory for x okay it creates a memory for x and if you scroll little bit down to x you can see here x is already initialized to undefined even the first line of code is not executed but what happens javascript actually creates a memory for uh, all the variables that's created and it actually first the first phase will be memory creation phase and it already created a space for x and the value is initialized to undefined now as soon as this particular code is getting executed what happens is okay the global scope will be updated and the value of x will be okay the value of x you can see here it's already updated to zero in the global scope okay now it is uh, it checks okay zero is uh, less than 0 0.5 so it will not be entering this particular if block so it entered into the else block and it's again checking okay now it, the value of x is currently it is 0 now what happens 2 will be assigned to x okay so you can see here it's already taking the global variable okay it has it's not creating a new x okay it is already taking the global variable and if i press f10 in the uh, global scope you can see that it's already updated and it's updated to yes you can see here right so it's updated to 2 okay so now the value of x is 2 it didn't create a new uh, memory for x whatever was initially available that uh, 0 was updated to 2 and if i print now in the console you can see that it is 2 that is uh, the global scope the uh, for uh, var keywords okay but instead of this var if it was let what will happen will that x get updated initially we were having 0 and uh, now it is updated uh, let is uh, uh, updated to uh, 2 x is updated to 2 now what will be getting printed ok so that we have to just check ok now we will again refresh ok now we will remove all this breakpoint we know that it will enter here ok so now what will happen yeah now x you can see that it's undefined earlier what happened it was actually showing 
uh, x as 0 because we have already created this where as uh, where we have already created right so now you can see here uh, we have two scopes now we have a, a block scope and we have a global scope in this uh, global scope you can see here there will be an x with value 0 right because we have got that from the uh, original math.floor okay we have so th we have x in two places one is in the uh, global scope and another is in the uh, block scope and as soon as this particular curly braces is entered right as soon as this entered this particular scope is gone so it will not this x will not be available outside so if i print a, uh, print an f10 so now you can see again the x is updated to the global scope rather than in the block scope so now if you see the value of x that is getting printed will be zero okay so that's the ma major difference between where and let keywords okay so this is within that uh, uh, lock, uh, block scope which uh, which will not be available outside these curly braces but if it is where it will be overwriting, overwriting the global scope okay it will uh, having only one scope that is the global scope but if it is let then x will be having two scopes one is in the global scope for where keyword and one is the local scope for the let keyword okay this will be the similar case for the const as well okay so i hope you got an idea about uh, the scoping in javascript and the answer in our case okay as we have used where the answer would be 2 okay 0 will be overwritten by 2 and we will be printing 2 as the answer so answer for this particular question is 2 so that's it for today's video thanks a lot for watching